Good morning, my lovely friends. Welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee, and I just released a video recently telling you to throw vegetable oil right out of your diet. All seed oils really need to be cut out of your diet, and I kind of delve into some of the health risks and a few of the reasons why, and I reveal to you that I have made the decision to cut seed oils out of my diet. And so there's actually a lot more to it than that, but that video was already almost an hour long. So I have two more videos, this one and one more, that I wanted to film to give you further information on that without making it all one really, really long video. So I wanted to start that by telling you what some of the changes that I've made in my diet are since doing that because it's great for me to come to you and say the sky is falling, but I need to give you some practical applications. And so I figured I would do that by showing you what I've done to make um, this practical for me and for my life. And so, as I've said, I have completely cut seed oils out of my diet. To my knowledge, the only place that I am still getting seed oils is my Burt's Bees chapstick. And I have not been strong enough yet to get rid of it. I love Burt's Bees. Um, the ingredients are beeswax, uh, coconut oil, sunflower seed oil, peppermint oil, a couple other things I can't pronounce, rosemary leaf extract, soybean oil, canola oil, and a few other things I can't pronounce. So there are, I mean, coconut oil, peppermint oil, um, rosemary leaf extract are all fine. Sunflower seed oil, soybean oil and canola oil are no-goes. I've cut those out of my diet. And of course, by putting it on my lips, I am consuming it. And I probably put chapsticks on, chapstick on my lips 15 times a day. I am actually addicted. It is a problem. I'm hoping to find like some kind of nice um, tallow lip balm. Um, there's a few local farmers that make something like that. I'm eventually gonna make the switch. I just haven't yet. Uh, baby steps. But in terms of food that I actually swallow on purpose, um, I've cut it out completely. And guys, that's what the next video is gonna be. I'm going to actually give you kind of the evidence and like how I feel since doing that and some of the things that I've seen in myself. But I will just preface it by saying, I feel amazing. Oh my gosh, have I seen a difference since I've cut um, seed oils out of my diet. Like night and day, astoundingly better. Like I feel so much better. So um, there are a few things because obviously, like I said in the first video, my, um, uh, world of food that I was I'm able to consume went th from this big down to being this big so I needed to fill those gaps with stuff because I can't just starve myself that's not gonna help me either I need to still eat and and consume I just want to consume really nutrient dense healthy food in place of what I was consuming prior um, and so I'm gonna kind of go over that a little bit with you not my whole menu or anything but just some of the things I've added in and I'm gonna start by showing you my smoothies because I have started I have the same breakfast every single day of my life and um, which I'll eventually share with you guys and then for lunch I have a smoothie and I have a piece of fruit lately it's been clementines because we're in citrus season and I've been able to find really delicious organic clementines at my grocery store and then for dinner I'll have whatever I'm having for dinner and this has been working for me really well um, it's interesting because I've decreased I would say the overall amount of food that passes my lips in a day has decreased a lot because I can't really snack anymore. They're, the amount of things that I'm really able to consume are so few that unless I make it myself, there isn't really snack food out there for me. Um, at least not that's in season. Clementines, really, basically. Um, and so I, you'd think that, well, I guess I, let me put it this way. Have you ever decided to get on a diet and you wake up on a Monday morning and you say you've planned out your food for the day and you are just so hungry and you say to yourself well I'm training my stomach my stomach is shrinking so that's why I feel hungry and once my sh my stomach shrinks I won't feel hungry anymore I have not had to go through that transition because even though the amount of food I'm putting in my body is less I'm making sure that it's so nutrient dense that it my body actually feels so much better nourished and more energized than when I was eating all the time but consuming seed oils and, and lots of sugar as well. Um, and so that has, is one thing that I can tell you has actually gone really well for me. And that's why I feel like diets don't work because 
as, as time goes on, you're into this diet for two, three weeks, your body's like, I'm starving. Because not only are you not eating as much, but the food that you are eating still isn't any better. And so your body's like, yeah, no, I still need more. And so with me replacing it with everything I'm gonna show you here, my body's like so happy, so sated. I don't live my life all day feeling hungry and feeling empty and feeling my stomach growl. I'm not experiencing that. And a huge part of that is these smoothies. Um, and so I'm gonna show you quickly what I put in here. I make one for me and one for Tom. And um, I go to work. My shift at work starts at 1230 in the afternoon. So I swing by Tom's work and bring him a fresh smoothie that I've just made. Um, and so he's able to get like a, a fresh smoothie as well. So I split a banana between me and Tom and I always give Tom the pea, uh, his pieces a little bit bigger than mine because I don't need as much smoothie to feel full and obviously he does so I always give him a few more ingredients otherwise our smoothies are really similar. So I have half a banana um, and then I do, I have organic whole cranberries that I get from the grocery store. Again, I have Wegmans but just whatever store you shop at, just go to the frozen fruit section and just make sure you shop the organic label. And so I add some whole organic cranberries and then I'm doing organic strawberries, again, frozen. Freezing your fruit does not impact the nutrition very much. And so I like doing frozen fruit. Of course, in the summertime, I will try and get fresh, but for now with it being March. And then I'm doing organic spinach. And I, I like to put in quite a bit of spinach. I don't want it to overwhelm the flavor, but I definitely want us to get some greens. And then for the longest time I was buying frozen um, avocado pieces, but they didn't have it the last time I went. So I just bought some avocados because uh, I definitely, I, I love having avocado in my smoothies. It makes it so creamy and you can't taste it. Z avocado is much like zucchini where you cook with it or you put it in something and it just takes on the flavor of whatever you're making. So you can't really taste the avocado. And Tom, which hopefully he hasn't watched this far, Tom doesn't know that I put avocado in them because he's not an avocado fan. Um, and I, he's never said anything, so I really don't think you can taste it. So I, I give each of us half of an avocado here I have ground flaxseed. I buy whole organic flax seeds from Azure Standard, and then I just put them through our coffee grinder. I give our coffee grinder a, a rinse, and then I send them through the coffee grinder, and it does a really excellent job of grinding those seeds up real fine. And you, again, can't taste it in the smoothie, and because they're ground so fine, you really can't even tell that it's there. Now. This next item is both a smoothie ingredient as well as something else on my list to tell you I've added to my diet, and that is raw whole milk. So I learned through my research, and it made me very sad, that when you are purchasing pasteurized milk from the store, mind you, I was buying whole grass-fed organic milk from the store, from the grocery store, and I felt so good about that. I was so happy about that and felt like I was doing my body so much good, and I really wasn't. When you consume pasteurized milk, pasteurization means that they've just heated the milk up for a certain amount of time to kill off everything in it, and they sure do kill off everything in it. They kill off the good and the bad. Um, and when they do that, a lot of those nutrients that you're supposed to be getting from the milk are gone. And that's something that I've learned in this journey is that food is more than just filling your body with stuff. You actually, and I feel like this should be obvious, but I never thought about it before this. You, everything that you consume is made up of different compounds, different um, enzymes and vitamins and minerals, and your body needs those things. That's the whole purpose of eating food. You need to be feeding yourself vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and a, a host of other things as well. And so when you're drinking milk from the grocery store, those things are largely absent. And that's what makes it so difficult for your body to um, digest and process milk if it's been pasteurized. Um, it, it actually, milk from the udder before pasteurization has its own compounds present to help your body process and digest the milk. And those are absent when it's gone through a pasteurization process. So 
I did a lot of research, I listened to podcasts, YouTube videos, I read articles, I've read it in books, and I made the switch. I decided I wanted to start drinking raw milk. So I found a farmer local to me. I only have to drive like 20 minutes and I'm getting a gallon a week of raw milk and it's cute. I even got my name on it and everything. And it's so good. <laughs> it is delicious. And so I just give it a, a gentle little shake to distribute the cream throughout because again, I want that fat in my smoothie. That's part of what helps us feel so full. And I just fill it up. I don't fill it up all the way, but my, I have a Ninja little smoothie thing. And if you don't put quite a bit of liquid, it gets um, jammed up and it's really annoying when that happens. And then I always have to sit back because there's so many ingredients. I like to just make sure I've got the banana, strawberries, cranberries, avocado, spinach, the flax, the milk, Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. I think that's it. This looks really small to me. I'm going to put a couple more strawberries in here because this one's Tom's and I want him to be full. A couple more strawberries. I was putting yogurt in for the longest time, but same thing. Um, the same thing that I just said about milk is true about yogurt as well. And so I was getting it from the store and until I take the time to learn how to make it myself, which I will eventually do, I'm just going to skip it. And they've still been delicious without the yogurt. Um, and then I have, like I said, a Ninja smoothie maker. So this, uh, the blade actually screws on top like this. And then you flip it upside down and hook it in. And then I, ho I have earplugs. Oh my gosh, guys, this is really funny that I'm admitting this to you. In my silverware drawer right here, I keep earplugs. And usually I'm doing this right before I'm getting ready to leave for work. It's 1135 and I have to leave here by like 1150, no later than. Um, and so I put in earplugs because the sound of this thing gives me anxiety. <laughs> it literally like makes my heart beat fast. I hate the sound of it, but I don't want to stand here and plug my ears because it goes for 60 seconds or like something like that. And I like to still be able to do other stuff. So I'm going to put my earplugs in and let this run. <laughs> Now, my smoothie and Tom's smoothie is exactly the same, except for one notable difference. And that is I have also added a Mary Ruth's liquid prenatal vitamin to my diet. It just so happens that because of the stage of life that I'm in, I chose to go with a prenatal. I'm not pregnant, but you know, just in case. Um, and I also, I did it because um, Dr. Katherine Shanahan scared the poop out of me with her talk about women being under um, nourished when they get pregnant and throughout their pregnancy and whatnot. And I just, I, I don't know where I stand. I don't know. I'm imagining that I'm not very uh, nourished because of my consumption of seed oils prior. So I just thought it would be a good idea to add it in. But if it if I were in a different stage of life um, and I didn't need to do prenatal, I would still do something else. I would add something else to my diet, some kind of multivitamin or something of the like. I like Mary Ruth. I like her company. I've heard good things about it. Um, the prenatal is not organic, um, but they do have organic options on their website and they don't have any um, seed oils in here. I also like it because they have folate versus folic acid, and I like it because they did not put iron in here. Um, I know that there are some prenatal vitamins where the iron is included, and I've read that you need to check and see where you're at with iron before you add it because it's bad to be um, to have too much iron in your diet, so not to take it unless there's a deficiency. So I would need to get blood work done for that, but just in case, I didn't want it in there. Um, and so to my smoothie, I add two tablespoons of this liquid um, prenatal vitamin. It looks exactly like egg yolk. It is the exact same color and almost the same consistency as egg yolk. Um, and it's not very good on its own. So I'm glad that I'm doing smoothies because I'm not good at taking pills and I don't know that I would be able to choke it down if it weren't for the fact that I hide it in a smoothie. And that's it for the ingredients for our smoothies. And I want to take a moment here to say before we move on from the smoothies that they smoothies can very quickly go from healthy to not healthy. We do not add 
any added sugar to them at all. In the very beginning, I was adding like a teaspoon of honey um, because I thought maybe that there'd be a bit of a transition period there getting us to like smoothies. There really wasn't. Tom and I took to them very easily. Um, and so I quit doing that after like a week. Um, but this is it. The only fruit that I add are the strawberries, the cranberries, if you consider cranberry fruit, which I guess it is, and the banana. Um, all three of those are on the lower end of uh, fruit that is high in sugar content. Um, things like apples and peaches are on the higher end, so I don't add those. Um, and then I make sure to have a good balance of fruit to veggie. So that's why I do half an avocado and a whole bunch of spinach because I want to make sure I'm getting a variety of nutrients and it's not just real heavy on the fruit because then it's just gonna get sweet and it's gonna be more of a treat than um, something in my diet that's really nourishing me. So keep that in mind, please. Try not to have your smoothies be too sweet. I know they're more palatable that way, but you're kind of defeating the purpose. So keep it to low sugar content fruits and make sure you have a good balance of veggies in there. My goodness, you guys, I have really come to love my smoothie. I wait until I get to work to start drinking it and my body is just like, mm, give me the nutrients. <laughs> this one time I forgot which smoothie I was on and I accidentally gave Tom my smoothie. And so I ran out to him and I was like, oh, that's mine, I'm sorry, give it back. And he was like, why does it matter? And I said, I put a liquid prenatal in mine. And he goes, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen to me? Cause he had already started drinking it. I said, well, don't be surprised if you start lactating. And then I laughed, I was like, nothing. It's just a bunch of vitamins, you're fine. But it was really funny. So anyway, I have to move on because um, I literally have to leave for work in three minutes. Um, so two more things to tell you about. I have started including sourdough in my diet. This is my sourdough starter. I have not yet named him or her. If you have any name suggestions, please drop them down in the comments. I feel like it's such a commitment, like naming your sourdough starter. I don't know what. I'm so proud of myself because I started this from scratch myself. I did not buy this. I started it. And I actually just fed it this morning. Look how, oh man. And I love how it smells. Mm, 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 mm. I have not yet baked a successful loaf of sourdough bread, um, but I still have been consuming sourdough every single morning. And I'll tell you how very quickly. I got this um, idea from a YouTuber pro home cook, I think. I'll link his YouTube down in the description. I really enjoy his videos. I like his personality. I think he's such a cutie. And I really like his ideas and his recipes and whatnot. Um, and so I watched his sourdough video and he was encouraging uh, people not to throw away their discard. And instead he said to get your cast iron skillet, which I always have on my stove with butter in it, and heat it up. He sprinkled a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of rosemary into the pan. And he just scooped his discard right into his hot cast iron and made like a flatbread out of it with rosemary and salt. And oh my gosh, I thought, what a good idea, because I don't always have time. I usually don't have time to do anything elaborate with my sourdough, and I'm so new with it that I haven't really figured out how. I only tried to make bread once, and it didn't rise, so I did something wrong. It still tasted good, and I still ate it, but it wasn't proper. Um, but I use my sourdough discard to make my breakfast every single morning, and I just make it into a flatbread, and I put like eggs and stuff on top of it and eat it that way. And it's so delicious and it's giving me so much nutrients because the whole point of sourdough is that you're fermenting the flour and water mixture. And anytime you ferment anything, you are receiving more nutrients than you would if you were to just eat a regular piece of bread. And it's a much easier um, sub substance for your body to digest because when you ferment something, um, it has already started to break down the gluten in the flour. That's the whole point. Um, and so I've been eating it. It's delicious. It's good for you. It's getting more nutrients into my body and it's better for me than just eating a piece of bread from the grocery store, which I already wasn't doing. I was making my own just plain yeast bread, um, but this is a step up even from that. And I'm actually, Tom and I are traveling. Today's my last day of work. And then we go out of town. We're going to Florida for a few days. And so I transferred some of my sourdough starter into one of those 3.4 ounce travel safe plastic containers. 
<laughs> and I've got the lid because when I woke up this morning, it was spilling out the top and I used some of it this morning and I fed it this morning and you hopefully you can see it's like a little bubbly and I'm going to take this with me because we're staying with my sister-in-law and so I'm just going to be like, hey, got any flour? <laughs> So I'm even like traveling and bringing my own food with me, which I think is really funny. So yeah, sourdough added it. I don't know a lot about it yet. There will be videos to come as I learn more. I'll probably make a quick video out of just my breakfast because it's so good and it's worth seeing. Um, but I'll have to do that when I get back from my trip. So sourdough. Last thing, I have not started doing this yet. It only just came in the mail. I read about and then decided to go ahead with water kefir. Um, and so these are my water keeper grains. I'm keeping them in the fridge until I'm ready to get started with them. And basically what water keeper is, it's a fermented water sugar drink. And so you combine the kefir grains, water, and a sweetener of some kind. I don't know a lot about it yet because like I said, I haven't started, but um, the live water kefir grains, water, and sugar, which can be organic cane sugar, turbinado sugar, rapadura, um, it says not to use raw honey or there was one other thing in here. It said not to use. I don't remember. I'll post more about it as I learn more about it. Um, but basically that is just a really nutrient dense, good probiotic drink um, instead of just drinking water because Sally Fallon in the Nourishing Traditions book said that water in the way that we get water is actually not that great for you. It's got um, chlorine and um, fluoride and even if you do have a watering filter system that's not great because it filters out a lot of the good stuff too much like pasteurizing milk so I was like man like am, are we doing anything good for ourselves at all anymore no so I am learning how to add our nutrients back into our food the best I can and so that's it guys that's pretty much all I've done um, and then obviously cutting because I'm putting so much nutrients in my body now, I'm not craving like snacky stuff anymore. And it is just so funny to me how I didn't have to go through any weird transitional phase. I didn't have to go through a period of time where I craved things really bad. I didn't have to go through a period of time where I just felt really hungry. Um, it was easy because I was swapping out the bad stuff for the good stuff. So my body, instead of feeling starved, was feeling fed and feeling nutritious and it was it was like oh, thank you thank you for giving me all of these vitamins and minerals and enzymes and for finally giving us what we've needed from you for the past 28 years <laughs> and so I have so much energy and I just feel satiated I feel I feel good I feel I don't feel hungry and it's been amazing. So I just wanted to come in here quickly. Again, I couldn't really go into this with the first video because what is this gonna be like 20 minutes? We'd be an hour and a half into this conversation. So I wanted to make this separate. And then this last video on this topic will be me telling you guys some things that I've noticed in my body since making these changes. That video is gonna be a little bit TMI, but I'm committed to it because I really want you guys to know. I mean. This is more than, I'm not just talking out my butt here. Like these are things that I've put into practice that I'm seeing really positive results from. So I want you guys to have all the information so that you can make your own healthy life choices and you know, whatever that may look like for you. So stick around for that. Subscribe if you haven't, please, and turn the bell on so that you'll receive those notifications. Thanks for listening. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye.